And there we go. There was there was a wrong button all the time. Uh, I don't know why, but it was the wrong button. There we go. Hopefully, we should, we are all now. Yeah, it's working. I hope. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll we'll find out in a sec. So. Yeah. Hello, hello, welcome to Band of Badgers. I am Dave, your host for this session, and joining us as our Q&A guests are Bill and Charlie Rioff from Beal and Grimms. How are you doing both? Great. Excellent, thank you. Good, good, good. How are you? I am very well. It is um, the middle-ish early afternoon, well, early late afternoon. It's four o'clock here in the UK. <laughs> it's breakfast time for you guys, so thank you yeah. very much for doing yeah. this. But yeah, it's good. We got a lip where it's the UK. So we had sunshine yesterday, which means today it's raining. Um, we, that's what happens. That was your one day. Now you get three months of rain. That, that was our summer. Go. Yeah, that, that was it. That's done. Yeah. Um, we, can, we, can, we can move on from that. Yeah. Um, now, if you didn't already know, both Bill and Charlie are uh, some of the co-founders of Bill and Grimm's, along with, um, let me try and get this right, Bill, Charlie, Matt, John, Paul, and Ringo. Um, otherwise known... <laughs> Otherwise known as the Beatles. There you we go. Always forget Ringo. Oh, right. It's kind of brutal. Yeah, there we go. Um, the guy back there holding down the rhythm section. <laughs> Nobody knows. There's always that number six out there. Um, and they make, Beatles and Grimm's, they make obviously the best artifacts, handouts, and maps for tabletop games that I have ever seen. And I am a big fan of this. Um, now, also joining us around the table is our co host, Steve. How are you doing, Steve? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Yes, very good today. <laughs> You're good. <then. laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sure. Just check uh, it. I, I had a very late last late day <laughs> last night because after we finished streaming, I had some work to do. So uh, yeah. 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 So you did you get any sleep anyway? Anyway, beside that. <laughs> I, I, I went to bed at half. Moving on. Yeah. We're, we're, we're... We'll leave, we'll leave Steve to worry about that. So if you <laughs> happen to fun. have uh, any questions uh, for our guests, do put them into live chat, and uh, Steve will just politely interrupt us as we're talking and get the answers to your questions. So do uh, do let us know. Now, for those of you who don't know uh, what we do as Band of Badgers, we support writers, artists, designers, and creators across all of our shows. And if you happen to have a role-playing game or a related product and you would like us to feature it here, um, if you would like to do us, uh, like us to do an unboxing, or maybe you'd like to do an interview like this, or maybe you have a Kickstarter kicking off soon. Um, all you have to do is just get in touch and we'll be happy to help you out. Um, you can find all of our content on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash band of badges. Please subscribe, it, it means the world to us. And if you, f you would like to support us in return, you can in all the usual places. We have uh, Twitch subs, Patreon, merchandise, and even an Amazon wish list. <laughs> and we have now with all of that, out of the way, we can concentrate. On I don't even know what half of those things are. They're, yeah, um, nor do I really. But people say you've got to have these. I'm like, okay, just read let's, the script, Dave. Eh? Exactly. Let's do it. Let's 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 do that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'll just stick to it. It's, it's easy. So awesome. Now today, guys, we wanted to specifically talk about uh, your uh, your team up with Pezo. Uh, that was started last year, or, or maybe yeah. uh, before that. Um, specifically, the Pathfinder Character Chronicles, which is a beautiful product. And for those watching, you'll see it on the right-hand side there. We've got some pictures going on, and those will gently tick through. And we're kind of we're going to do a deeper dive into looking at the product. Bill has the physical version in front of him, so we're going to look at uh, probably the fighters, chron the fighter chronicles, fighter character chronicles, yeah. in a bit more detail. Um, but we wanted to kind of, it is a beautiful looking book. And, and it's, it, can I just emphasize how large this thing turned yes. out? Like it's well over 200 pages. It's a, it's a, it's a beast. It so, looks beautiful. And, and also to point out these pictures on the right hand side, these are pictures of the physical products. These are not the mock-ups. Okay. This is not right. mock-ups that you've seen us use before. These are now the physical items, uh, oh. where, which, which the guys now have. So, I wanted to start with probably the most important part and the, mo <laughs> and the most excited about right. is a big reveal because we've been sitting on this for a long time that um, Beedle and Grimm's have been very gracious and in their credit section in the back of their book, uh, in the back of the books, they have listed us. They have listed myself and Steve 
as playtesters and band of badgers as a whole. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you guys. Thank you very much. Um, it means a lot. Um, yes, I, thank you very much. I hope our well, advice is not wrong. <laughs> thank, thank you. I mean, honestly, yeah. we, we, th these are, it, it's a, it's a massive effort. There's so much detail in these things and, um, you know, it was just uh, it, impossible for us on our own to make sure that everything worked and we'd gotten all the little details right. You guys had so much fantastic insight on not just the making sure that the details are technically correct, but also on making it very usable, making it user friendly. Um, just the flow of the whole thing and, and knowing what to include and what not to include, um, it, your, your feedback was absolutely essential and, and the, uh, the, the credit is well deserved. Thank you very much. So if, you're, if you are a Kickstarter or publisher and you need play testers, <laughs> get, get in touch. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, thank you. It was an absolute, um, we loved looking at it. Any, I think anyone in our position would. We love the game. We love the rules, we love adventures, we've been gamers all our lives, and to have an opportunity to help out um, was great. Yeah, just so people who are watching this know, this wasn't like we sent it to them and they wrote back and said, yeah, it's cool, or something. Like, we got back detailed, mocked up <laughs> PDFs where they were, you know, marking things and going, couldn't you do this? And what about this? And here's an idea for this. I mean, it was a lot of detail very well thought out um, and incredibly helpful. Thank you. It was a pleasure. So it was we, it. Yeah, it, it, it was really good. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of chat with you guys is we know Beetle and Grimms. So if you don't know Beetle and Grimms, they make these fantastic... Like, we keep, we keep saying boxes, but they're not. This is... This is um, game... They're, they're an experience. Yeah, an experience in a box. <laughs> but there's that box like word that. again. But it is, um, it's everything you need for your tabletop team. So whether you're a dungeon master or players, you want to buy this. this um, it's like immersive content. The quality of the hand-ups, there's jewellery in these boxes. You know, there are, it's not just printed paper uh, and maps. There's jewellery, there's miniatures, there's everything you need to tell a co cohesive story. And the box element is just because it's based on a single story. For example, you've got Avernus or Frostmaiden. <laughs> They are contained stories within. Um, and then with your, uh, with your work with Pezo, with Pathfinder, this is something very different. This is, this is a book. And as you said, this is 200 pages. This is an in-depth character sheet. This is character-specific class skills, feats, weapons, everything. Plus, because uh, I've added this in there as well, there's a whole ton of the Beetle and Grimm humour in there as well. You've got the shopping lists and what to do here and there. You've got the old comic adverts. Um, you've got Charlie's character, uh, the Sir Knight. Uh, <laughs> so we've got all of those elements. But it's vastly different. In my mind, it's vastly different. The design process, the creative process, just the amount of hard work is very different to what you do is your platinum boxes and your silver boxes. So can you kind of go into detail about all of it, just, just the immensity. <clears throat> um, well, I, I, I would say, the first thing I would say is that we actually talked about this idea for a couple of years and um, it always seemed uh, it completely undoable for us. Like it just seemed like it was the, the amount of sweat equity was going to be more than we could possibly handle. Um, and then at Game Hole Con, we met a pair of really super talented, super motivated uh, layout artists named Rob and Charlotte Yergang. Um, and after meeting the two of them, we all kind of turned to each other and went, okay, now I think we could pull this off. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we needed. We, we needed somebody who had an, an incredible talent for layout and, and a, a vision for how to put a book together, experience in page layout, um, a lot of experience technically, 
and um, they were just our kind of people, really relatable, fantastic, energetic, enthusiastic people who love the game and really wanted to dive headfirst into this thing and take a chance. We didn't know if it was going to work out or not, and they committed 110 percent. And um, you know, without them, there, there's no way that this ever would have come together because um, that was just the first essential thing. So fantastic. You mentioned like the the artists involved, but Peso also gave you access, and there's original artwork in in these books as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a, a, a huge amount of it. We also, um, the, the other thing we ended up doing um, uh, was we, we hired uh, Chris Daly as our art director. And he, he kind of had two jobs. One was to go through all of the Paizo art because they literally gave us access to anything we wanted. So we were pulling things from 1E and from 2E. We really tried to find stuff, even out of like the comics. Um, we're trying to find stuff that people don't necessarily see every day. Most of it is not from the core rule book. Um, uh, uh, we, we really wanted to show people, because there's amazing, amazing art in their files <clears throat> that a lot of people don't get to see. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff out of the adventure paths, players never get to see, or they see, you know, once very briefly for eight seconds when the DM holds it up and then they never see it again. So we really tried to dig in a lot on that stuff. And then he also created a lot of, um, a lot of smaller pieces of art that we use to kind of fill out the pages. There's lots of watermarks and things in the, in the pages just to create sort of a cohesive design element to it. Um, so that was that was the other big hire that we made for this. To, that was they were kind of our team uh, that got us through this thing. Cool. You mentioned the um, like the artwork. What's been your favorite piece you've you've found so far? There's, there's eight million of, of sharks. That's certainly the most popular <laughs> populist. <laughs> one, one of the things that, yeah one of the things you discover as you as you go through this stuff is there are there are certain things that that Paizo loves to do and and for some reason there's an incredible number of pieces of sharks and they're all awesome like just <laughs> it's it's really funny you'll you'll notice it because we picked a bunch of them so you'll you'll see them when you go through the books so i mean um I was going to say that the books themselves they they are massively concise, uh, and we're going to be do, we're going to be doing a, a deeper dive um, in the second half uh, of the of the Q and A. Um, uh, oh, also to point out to to viewers, uh, if you have a question, do stick it into live chat so Steve can fish it out for you. Steve, obviously, if you have questions, just so shout them out. Um, and the other, I did have another thing that just popped out of my head now. Um, what what was the was that Steve? Oh, sorry, you've got a. Uh, I was reading sorry, a Zoom um, question. Right. Um, also, I was just. Somebody did. Okay, I won't even. Because you're on the tip of your tongue there. <laughs> I was going to say, we are doing a giveaway. So, if Steve, <laughs> yeah. if you've got a uh, favourite word to use, we have. Uh, before we forgot, because we forgot last time. Uh, Bill and Charlie have been very gracious in giving us a $50 gift voucher. And we're going to do a code, code word poll. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, we'll do a code word, yeah. Yeah, it'd be easier to manage. Yeah. And then basically you can put that into live chat and, and grab grab some. Um, um, so, but I will, I will, I will, oh, yeah, go on Before then. I forget this, right. So um, you will never know who's saying uh, the cover material looks great when you held the book up to start the show. Um, is that the vegan leather? It is, yeah. Uh -huh. And, and um, when, you, when you see all of them together, each, each one is – I wish I had a – I have a Druid cover here somewhere. But anyway – they're, they're all a little bit different. Um, we, we found different different vegan leather materials for for each one that, that kind of give a different vibe to them. So some of them are very slick and some of the, like the Druid one has a real roughness to it. it, it and um, they're fun. They're fun to put them all together. They, they, they're, they're definitely a set, but each one feels a little bit <clears throat> unique, I hope. 
and that was that was definitely a long process there was was picking all the covers picking i mean this is this is coming from a place of total ignorance on our part of of the the just unbelievable variety of choices you have of uh, the colors, cover material, mm -hmm. emboss, deboss, foil, how you can't emboss or you can't foil some of the materials because it doesn't work right. And we, we were lucky that the, the, our, our partners in China were incredibly, or New Zealand really, and then China were, were really, um, first of all, kind to us in the sense of, yeah, we clearly don't know what you're doing, but we're going to help. <laughs> and and then just sending us physical stuff. So we got tons of actual physical swatches, and we can look at stuff. And uh, it was it was it was a little maddening because you know you don't want that many choices. You don't want to choose among ten thousand variations of the same thing. It's just mm -hmm. it just drives you nuts. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it was it was good, and the stuff we ended up with was great. So yeah, there was a there was a whole book of um, of of colors for the ribbons. So like each of these books has um, each of these books has you know two ribbons to hold your your places for the the, yeah. the pages you want to keep going back to, and the colors for each are different. So each book has different colors that kind of go with the the vibe of the book and and nice you text. know you get hundreds of choices of these things to go through and it was it was uh it's it's my my wife was sort of dismayed <laughs> by how much time i was spending with this little book of ribbon swatches has, has it been uh, a labor of love or have you gone oh my god i wish i never did this because pathfinder <laughs> pathfinder core rule set is so big these are big big numbers and when you start uh, focusing on when you level up your characters, how does this attach to this? And when you're doing it manually, there's a lot of backwards and forwards. So the bookmarks are fantastic. I love the river bookmarks. Um, just you know, having to go backwards and forwards and having everything in one book is lovely. Um, I really, really kind of appreciate that. But how is it from your point of view to put that all together? You, it doesn't matter if you've got a design team or not because <laughs> they've still got to do that. You've still got to make the decision. You've still got to sit back and go, Oh my gosh, like how do we, there's too much variety, there's too much. How do we net all this all down? Yeah. And was the whole team involved or who was the lead on the, on the Chronicle project? Uh, it, 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 it was me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Zoom, it's different on Zoom. That guy. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was mostly me and Charlie and, and the design team. Um, it just, it, it became one of those things that it's so, um, as you say, it's so detailed that you couldn't, it's a little harder for people to sort of um, help out on the edges the way that we do with a box, you know, and with a, with a box, you can say, okay, Paul's gonna be the lead on this box, but Matt will be in charge of the jewelry and uh, John will be in charge of the bonus encounters. And we can kind of break those things up this this was really difficult to break up and and what we found pretty quickly was that if you weren't in those two design meetings every week you really just had no idea what was going on yeah. and um so it it did become much more focused and um it's it's been a while since i've had a chance to work on any of the other projects that we do um i <laughs> I had almost no role in Frost Maiden whatsoever because uh, it, it was just we were we were you know up to our eyeballs at that point. Really, you just, um, you just didn't get a chance. There's because of the because of this project because of the the Pathfinder. Yeah, yeah, wow. I mean, it was this this really this really was a, a, a kind of a full time job for a while. It was it was um, it, it's been amazing. I, I I'm super happy we did it, and I I really hope we can continue to do it with with more classes, but, um, it definitely is not, um, it definitely is not simple. And, and, uh, uh, it, it was pretty consuming there for a while. I, I know, um, I know Rob and Char are, are excited to have a, a little bit of a break, but probably won't be much of one. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I, I helped for the first book and then basically tapped out because it's was, it was right. As, as, as soon as you get a little behind in the meetings, you stop being, you stop being valuable. Hmm. And I, I, we were changing logistics centers and I had a bunch of other stuff going on uh, at the same time. So it really was Bill's, Bill's being modest. It was basically Bill. Well, but I, you know, the, the, the other part of all this was, you know, we did this with our first Kickstarter ever. We've never done a That's Kickstarter true. before. Yeah. And those are a lot more complicated than you think they are. And Charlie was the lead on the Kickstarter part of it. So no. definitely wouldn't have happened without him, him running that part of it. Uh, I saw a question about the classes. So uh, what we, we started with um, fighter, wizard, rogue, cleric and druid are the five that we've done so far uh druid is the last one on the assembly line it's printing right now so they'll all be printed by late september and we'll start shipping them out from there um the um the first wave will go to the people who backed us on kickstarter and to people like you who helped put the thing together um Thank you'll you. definitely be getting a box of books and then uh we backed you on there, kickstarter we'll... as well so <laughs> oh, <right>. two boxes <laughs> um and then uh and then we'll we'll put them up on the website and start selling them directly from there and hopefully uh, you know we're, we're really hoping that there's a, a good um reception for these and people are interested in them we've we've kind of we've got we know what the next few books would be if we uh if we're lucky enough to be able to keep doing this and, and the interest level is good. So, um, so we got a few more classes kind of lined up and ready to go. And um, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get back into it really soon. We, we've been talking a lot about, um, uh, about the books. I think it's time we need to, we need to see uh, the books. Um, are we, okay. are we, are we happy to, to, to take a closer look? Yeah, this is this is going to be the awkward part where I move my camera around. So I I, I apologize to everybody while this this gets mucky. Um, okay, I'm going to switch cameras this end. So there we go. Yeah, all yours. Uh, let's see. Take the mirror off. There we go. How's that? Okay, perfect. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad, right? Yep. All right. So I'm doing this upside down, so that's yep. fine. Well, I'll screw this up periodically. Um so every every book opens with the uh the end pages that has a, a, mm -hmm. a sort of um uh keep or home base little little sketch that's specific to that character class and that'll come back up later. We 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 love the idea of, of uh uh, you know, I have I have strong memories back in uh, when we played as teenagers. One of one of the the big things because you didn't get to play as often as you wanted to. Yeah. So you'd sit at home and kind of dream up what your keep or your fortress or your you know rogue den would look like. And and we uh, so that's that's something we've tried to emphasize in these books for which is a lot of fun. Um, all right, so this is. The cover page, original art by Patricia Priya. So it starts with your certificate of birth. Um, yeah. You can you can fill out for yourself to start this off. Again, these books are designed to record the entire life of one specific character. Um, you can certainly use it as a reference for all of your fighter characters, but the idea is that you're going to have one character from birth to death and then you get to put it on your bookshelf and keep a record of that character's existence forever and ever. Um, the, the sort of genesis of this idea was, um, you know, Beetle and Grimm were characters from our own history that we played many, many years ago. And when people would ask us questions about those campaigns, we could barely remember any of the details <laughs> because it was so long ago and we had we didn't keep good notes. So. Uh, we love the idea of people being able to record a character's life and then actually have those notes on their shelf that they can go back to and remember. Um, I don't know if how well you can see it, but the, the, there are tabs along the side for all of the sections of this book. So, um, so it starts off with a, a very expanded character sheet. Um, as you know, Pathfinder rules are 
are very deep and mm -hmm. wide and complicated. And um, it just doesn't fit well on a two or three or even four page character sheet. So we give you lots of room for everything you want to do, lots of room for your inventory. Blood stains. Um, yep. <laughs> blood, <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. There you go. <laughs> yeah. As, as I said, we, we had a lot of fun doing the layout for this sucker. Um, so feats and abilities, big thing, big thing for fighters, all your feats. Um, we have page for for archetypes if you're if you're doing that. Yeah. Um, and it's also to point reading, out that it's, reading all this upside down. So you know, I, I, I apologize for the. Uh, no, that's right. cool. It's it's also to point out to people that this is these these character chronicles. It is a big book because you have everything there, and this isn't just four pages of character sheets you can fill out. This is in depth. For those of you who want to make that lifelong character, that you know has uh, a wealth of cure scores allies friends adventures this this book has everything if you especially if you like keeping notes um every detail is covered <laughs> literally because i checked it twice <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's every option as well so this You've is the, the uh... types in there yeah. so you, it's, it's covering every every base that you could want in one place which is great yeah thanks uh, this is the Pathfinder Society log. If you're in Pathfinder Society, you play that way. That we, we've put out, set up some some space for that. Um, this is a, a, one thing that I was really insistent on is is list, having a place to list the important people and important places that you've been in your adventures. It, it's so often, especially if you're like us and you don't get to play every single week, and you know maybe three or four weeks goes in between a game and a campaign will last several months. You find yourself back at a town that you visited, you know, at the beginning of an adventure and you have no memory of mm -hmm. why you were there the first time and who that guy was that you met and what it was that they told you. So it's a great way to keep sort of an organized journal of, of all of those experiences. It's also um, the DM's worst nightmare now as well because he's going to have to track as much information as he plays. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that NPC whose name you picked up on the fly yeah there it is <laughs> <laughs> so this is a list of your quests that you can just jot down little notes on all the things that you were sent off to do all right so this is set the beginning of section two so this is all a combination of the class rules for this class for fighter from both the player's handbook and the advanced player's guide so it's all combined here into one section this is an example of some of the art that we pulled. This is actually from one of the comics, I believe. Um, yeah. So stuff that people don't necessarily get to see all the time. Um, and so this is the entire class. We've combined all of the feats and skills that are important for fighters from, uh, from both of those books. Um, and it goes on and on and on. I, I love it. it's the design aspects as well because it's it's not just uh, a static document. You've got those kind of torn out page effects. You've got the post-it notes, like the medieval post-it right. note. Yeah. And, and there's also um, everything's written on parchment paper in the, in the background. But there are every now and then there are scribbles or sigils or runes that, that mark different elements. And again, just those those little touches mean so much. Yeah, there, there are some interesting little things going on that uh, I'll, I'm really excited for people to see and see what, what they figure out. And um, But the, yeah, there's lots of notes from, so the fighter book is full of notes from famous fighters or infamous fighters or Sir Eric of Slowhammer, who is not <laughs> famous nor infamous. <laughs> right. um, but... Uh, so these are the skills. Um, we got some you know, amazing art from, from all different places. Uh, tried to you know, include just an incredibly um, diverse and varied group of just ideas of what a fighter can be. You know, you, you, you have in your head maybe, you know, everybody probably, when you say fighter, everybody probably has one idea that immediately comes to their head, whatever that is. But there's so many different ways to approach a class. And so we, you know, we tried to, Chris was great in, in finding us not just cool art, but really diverse and interesting art to give you 
ideas of, oh my God, yeah, that could be a fighter too. A fighter could be this way. It could be completely different from the way I was, I was picturing it in my head. Um, skills and feats, on and on and on, as you can imagine, if you've ever played a fighter in Pathfinder. Um, There's lots of character art there as well. There's lots of ideas to help you create your character. Um, yeah. Again, I think anyone come new to the game, they think of people like a, a knight in armor or Robin Hood, simple things that they've seen before, and then they try to modernize that. So Robin, uh, you know, Robin Hood becomes the Green Arrow. So they kind of mix the two things. And there was so right. much character art in these books, across all these books, to give you character concept ideas, which is beautiful. Thank you. Um... So then we've included a bunch of the um, the archetypes that that we thought were were uh, particularly useful when you're we are building off of a fighter class, mm -hmm. um, and then so these are some of the adventure rules and uh, you know a a, a, cu a custom design condition table that that feels very specific to the fighter. Yeah. Um, damage types, uh, let's see, get to something visually interesting. Um, so, uh, you know, with, with the fighter one, we had a lot more room, you know, with the, the, the spell caster classes, um, you know, a big part of this book is the, all the combined spells Yeah. with the fighter one, we had a little bit more room to play so we could do some fun things like. This is the a, a redone version of the triggering moves chart that gives you all the information, but also has some very helpful notes from yeah. from Charlie's uh, character, Sir Eric. <laughs> um, take his advice at your own peril. Um, so we have a bunch of those things that have been redone in, in just a really fun way. Uh, this is the cover uh, chart there. Um, and then we get to equipment, which was for the fighter class was just a blast to do. Um, everybody knows that that fighters are are big on their their equipment lists and 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 weapons and armor and all the things that go along with with being in combat all the time. Um, so we decided to really kind of blow this section out. Um, so we created this, the, the weapon, <laughs> armor, and shields guide from Sear Grosted and Company, which is a um, absolutely insane uh, amount of, of detail that, that we went into and Rob and Char helped us with it. And I shouldn't say helped us with They wrote a lot of it. So hugely, hugely important with this. This, this um, was nice, though, because when I saw this, this was also, I mean, everything else is, rule, is rules, it features yep. from the core product. But this was making it your own, you know, more than just your own stamp on it. This is unique content as well. Yeah, it is unique content, and it, uh, it, it's um, <laughs> as you said, we we really tried to to capture a, a specific voice with this stuff. So this is all of the weapons and armor that we could find. Basically, um, a, a, a huge number of of options to. Um, uh, to get a fighter excited about the, the, the sorts of things that they might, not just the stuff that they can buy um, initially when they start out, but, but things to dream about that they might be able to find, you know, later in their career. Um, it, it's all, it all has these really, really funny uh, and, and uh, creative descriptions that Robin Shar worked really hard on. There's all of the, the dragon plate armor and and uh, shields and uh, and it goes on and on and on. You just have no idea how many weapons and armors and shields there are in Pathfinder. Yep. Uh, so this was just a blast to work on, and and um, and no, seriously, it keeps going. No, seriously, it keeps going. <laughs> um. So that was that section. That's that's sort of what what we what we got to do for the fighters because we didn't have um, uh, we didn't have that spell section to uh, to incorporate this time around. And then the the, the third section. Oh, go ahead. 
I was going to say, if you go back to the, the, the advert, because um, now I, I, I had a comic business for 20 years. And um, so uh, me being a comic collector from the 70s and 80s, I remember those adverts in the backs of the comics. Sure. <laughs> they are fantastic. It's like the old Charles Atlas thing. Exactly, mind. yeah. Um, th that's exactly the, the 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 memories I got from looking at that. That was superb. Um, and again, the sense of humour and everything that's in the book, again, which is synonymous with I think Beetle and Grimm's as a whole. Now uh, you tend to not take gaming too seriously, which is what I which yeah. is what I enjoy. It's a, it's escapism. It's fun. It's adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, that just that just was brilliant. I, I, yeah, I, I love that. But that's, you know, that's what we love about you guys too. And that's, that's how we knew that, uh, I, I think, um, that, that you would be such a good uh, help for us in working with this is, you know, when we play games with you guys, you have so much fun and you don't take it too seriously. And everything is, you know, uh, is, is open for, for, uh, to, to try and, and, um, I, I I just love the um, the open and humorous nature of your of your group. You guys cool. are hysterical and a lot of fun to play with. So, um, all right. Uh, section three is your journal. So this is where you can record all of your uh, your exploits. And and we've tried to give this a lot of detail as well. There are quotes in here again from mm -hmm. inspirational quotes from from various fighters. There is graph paper in here if you. Uh, come across something that you want to you want to map out. There's plenty of opportunities for that. And again, this is a very large section with lots of detail in it. Um, this whole thing's on on lay, a lay flat binding too, so you you can you use every inch of this thing to write on. Yeah, and we also use two different paper stocks. So the um, the middle section for the rules is all on a glossy paper that's very similar to like what what the the core rule book has. Yeah. And then the, the sections that you write on are on, on a much more hardy matte surface that works really well with pencils and can survive some erasure if you uh, if you change your mind on something. So um, they're, they're very, very thick stock and should hold up for a while. Um, so this is the journal, which goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I'll show you every page, but I did want to get to the fun stuff at the end here. Um, so I don't know if you noticed, but the monsters just keep getting bigger, bigger. as your journal yep. goes on. <laughs> you're going up and level. You're leveling okay. up somewhere in here. Um, and then here at the end, we have, again, I, I told you we'd get back to the keep stuff. Yeah. So um, we have a, an opportunity for you to, to um, record what your actual keep comes out. And it actually folds out, if you can see that. Um, yeah. And this yeah. is... Uh, this gives you a, an area where you can put the key of all the things that you're you're going to create for it, and and then I, a two page spread for drawing it out, and I, then on the back of this, I was going to say I think that's one of the things I liked about it the most. Uh, you know, this is this is one book, one one two tome, um, that has everything I need. I don't need to take other books, but I can have those things where I can pull bits out and expand on my book by having that kind of extra third page that comes out i can draw my maps i can draw my keep i can make my notes everything is so so concise it was just again seeing those um because i for a day job i'm also a designer and i know the amount of work and effort that goes into publishing these things <laughs> so yeah i mean and and for you know your first set of books it is it is completely top notch thank you thank we definitely dove into the deep end of the pool Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> Head first. <laughs> yeah. So at the back of your little, uh, your, your keep section, here's your guest book for all the people who come to visit you. And then the book ends with your certificate of death. Uh, whenever it is your character finally either meets his grisly end or retires in glory. Uh, there's the little uh, 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 credits section that we've discussed. But then there's one more little thing in here that I wanted to show you, which is every one of these has a little um, uh, sleeve in the back. And inside that sleeve is your battle board, which That's is nice. a, uh, a, a dry erase um, uh, 
board that just summarizes all the stuff that tends to change a lot at the table. We didn't, you know, we didn't want to, uh, we didn't want you to put the book under too much abuse for all the stuff that, that changes over and over and over again. Um, you know, it's nice to have something at the table that you can just change really quickly on the fly. Uh, so that has all that detail on the back is um, all of your uh, just just some quick reference stuff that that we thought would really come in handy. Um, yeah. So that's it. And each one of these is is specifically designed for the character class. So the fighter one is different from the druid one, which is different from the wizard one. Um, so a lot of thought was put into making these hopefully especially useful for the character class that you're you're using it for. So yeah. And I love the fact it it's in a purpose built pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's all in the one the one folder. Oh, and you have got the elastic band on there as well. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, bad boy. When, when you played with us last year, um, was that the first time you played Pathfinder? Um, not the very first time, but uh, you know, we definitely were not experts in it when we got into this. Um, so it's it's uh, you know, obviously, as everybody knows, Pathfinder's sort of uh, genesis is in um you know, the older versions of D&D, &D, and that's where a lot of the rules originally come from, and, and that's what we grew up playing. So um, we definitely had a, a, a good basis in, in the way that the rules are built and, and the, um, you know, the ideas behind it. But we, we definitely, there definitely was a learning curve in, in getting back into that and, and remembering all the differences between uh, the way that uh, 5e works and, and and the way that those those systems worked and the way pathfinder works now so cool. um, all right because uh, well, one off. thing i wanted to point out was obviously coming to pathfinder uh, as a new player can be a little bit daunting um especially when you see the size of the core rule book oh yeah so i know dave's got one behind him if i can get him to turn around and, and hold it up which one the core rule book the core rule book i do yeah um, so that, that's one, this... one thing is a little bit daunting and especially the number of options so when you're building yeah. your character having to trawl through there look at all the options look at the archetypes I mean I think the rule set's great because it allows you to build these non-standard fighters non-standard sure. character where I was you gonna play sorry Steve I was going to say Bill yeah. if you want to turn your camera around we can see your face there yeah. <laughs> um, um, so ha having this book, I think, as a new player, is a great way of getting into the game yes. as well because you've got everything there to build your um, build your character. All of the options, but it's specific to building that character class. Uh, so you're not trawling through um, the core rule book, and it is a great, uh, well laid out character sheet as well, which uh, is another thing you will struggle to find in Pathfinder. Uh, it is a very very good book. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very, very proud of the way it came out, and and uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I'm I'm really excited to get to the next one. So we we hope uh, we hope people like them. So spe speaking about, you mentioned uh, you know the next the next one, uh, and we we briefly spoke about this before we went on air. Um, we know there's Gen Con next week, and you have some announcements there. But do you want to do you want to tease those teasers? <laughs> we're gonna we're fishing now. We're fishing. <laughs> yeah. So you know, Eric from Pathfinder is gonna do his big address uh, next week, and mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna. He, he has an announcement about us that I won't spoil completely. But um, you know, ever since we got into the Pathfinder space, uh, we um, we've been talking about doing a, um, you know, a premium edition of, of one of their books, just like, you know, we've been doing for D and D. Um, so, uh, we're, uh, um, I, I uh -huh. they were, we're going to announce something. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was watching book. Charlie there. Charlie's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> close up. So, uh, uh, letting the lead out and then pull it back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, something along those lines is going to get announced next week. We're really, really excited to be able to kind of move into our next, the next phase of, um, you know, playing in, in Pathfinders and, and, um, 
you know, providing stuff for that, that cool. audience. And that, I, I have stuff. a follow up question, sir, then. So is this, so right. when, when Eric makes the announcement, is this, is this Pezo's opening speech and that you'll be included in that as part of it? And, they, and as soon as they go and we're doing stuff with Beale and Grimm's and it is, and as soon as they say that, are you then going to push a button on the website, your own website to go, da -da, and here it is for pre-order now? Uh, are we going to get a new product we can pre-order straight away? Oh, are you, you that that's <laughs> uh, there spot, are you? <laughs> we will uh, we will definitely make our announcement as soon as Eric makes his announcement. We won't be quite to pre-orders yet, but okay. it will be soon. Um, uh, oh, there was a question in the chat about uh, Starfinder. Uh, we yeah. definitely are planning to get into the Starfinder space as well. Um, we. Uh, uh, we're really, really excited about doing something for Starfinder. It is, it is a whole different aesthetic, and we want to, we want to really rethink everything about what we do, and and uh, and make sure that whatever it is we do for Starfinder really feels like Starfinder and doesn't just feel like a D and D or a Pathfinder product with space backgrounds you know so it's going to take some thought for us but we we're really really excited about it so we'll, we'll get into it for sure um we've got another question from mcguire review as well um oh yeah uh, long term are you going to continue to support publishers in terms of turning their product into the premium experience or as we saw with some of the dread tower stuff are you going to branch off more into your own writing um, I mean, I, the, the, hopefully the answer is both, right? Um, I, I would like to see that. I, I've mentioned that um, since the very first time I started speaking with Bill, actually. It was it was to do with Salt Marsh, and there was a letter in there. And I said, this is my favorite piece. And Bill said, well, he wrote that. And and then getting, uh, you know, Avernus and Frostmaiden, there's more original content in there. And sometimes the original content is even better. So, and then to get Dread Tales, which is, you know, what, a 30 odd page booklet of original storylines, which are, which, which are very different. Um, I, ju I just had the bounce of werewolves just pop in my head again <laughs> from uh, John's story. Um, I, I would love to see that. I would love to see, and we've spoken about this before, about original content from Beadle and Grimm's. Is, it, is that possible? Yeah, but I, I, you know, I think, um, I think you could do it. Uh, you know, you're you're the same as us. You are lifetime uh, gamers, storytellers. Um, that whole experience, be able to put that into different stories. It doesn't matter if they're one shots, short chapters, or whatever. Or I, I would love to see in 2022, you guys to say right. At, at the end of next year. Here's our book, a hardback book of stories or a, a campaign or whatever it is. I would love to see. Well, that. you're 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 talking to the right guy because uh, Charlie has uh, has written a a campaign in a, a world that he created that I was lucky enough to play through, and it was so fun and really original, and has definitely has its own voice that you haven't really seen in other things and um and we just have to get the uh the time to put it together and put it out so it's definitely that's definitely in the plans um turns out it's a lot of work it is yeah. <laughs> it is it is and steve mentioned you um you know the other partnerships you've got coming up um this is more about uh sort of beetling grim as a whole um but with uh, the stuff you're doing with the Taudori reborn with darrington press Yep. Um, you know, you've you've had uh, the different partnerships. You've got Wizard of the Coast. You've got Pezo. I, I think the amount of it's it's fantastic to see you working with other publishers like that and doing the same. Again, coming back to where where we started, those boxes of people know that this is what it is. And I think I meant I asked you in the in the previous Q and A. Is is the platinum boxes is the beating green boxes something that's that's yours or is that just specifically for dnd i think now we we're starting to see it with darrington press um i think that kind of answers that question there's there's more coming yeah yeah 
and and uh, and and uh, again, just just to to tease it out a little bit, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not not just going to be D and D and Tell Dory either. So um, definitely, definitely a um, you know the 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 general format of it, I think, applies to a lot of different gaming systems, and and we're you know we're looking around at things that we think it, it fits with which particularly well. Obviously, they'll all be a little bit different. The Taldori box is um, is a little bit different than anything we've done before, and we try to keep um, bringing unique ideas to each one, mm -hmm. and um, and what we announce next week will be a little bit different than anything we've done before either. So, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, what, what day is the announcement going to be? I think he does it Thursday. I think it's the first day of Gen Con. So, um, and then as soon as he announces that we'll, we'll have stuff up on our website and, um, uh, I, Charlie and I won't be there, but we have a booth at Gen Con. So if you're going to be there, um, please come by and say hello and we'll have things to show and, and, uh, uh, very soon we're also going to start putting the, the character chronicle books up for pre-order for people who didn't get a chance to back the Kickstarter. So those things will also, um, uh, be available soon. Uh, when you get your own stuff published, will you also do boxes for it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I can't imagine us putting out our own campaign setting and not doing the full treatment with, with handouts and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's a big part of the fun for us. You meant, you mentioned that, uh, Gen Con is next week. Um, something that, that we as band of badgers, we've set ourselves a goal for next year. So uh, a few weeks back, we went to the first uh, UK Games Expo since you know since lockdown. Uh, that was great. In December, we're going to be going to Dragon Meet, and we're going to be doing um, a few games and doing some shopping, basically. We're going to spend loads of money. That's what we're going to do. Sure. Yeah, um, right. But from the 1st of January 2022, we have uh, set ourselves a goal. So this, this is what we're going to do. For yeah. 2022, Band of Badgers is going to try <laughs> the very best we can. Uh, there are a lot of qualifiers we're, in here. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're going to come to Gen Con. So we're going to come to Gen Con oh. next year, and we would love to see you, buy you a drink. Um, Hell yes. Buy some Beal & Grimm's products. Uh, I need some more Shunk medallions. So we're, we're doing that. We're going <laughs> we're gonna yeah. to meet up with Josh McGuire, who's, I th if he's still in chat, uh, Wayne Brecky, uh, Eric Frankhouse, uh, Ryan from Session Zero, all the friends we've made, Theo Grady from Gallant Goblin, all the people we've met and, and spoke to and talked to, um, we talked about before we went over, like Mats by Mars and people like that. We just want to come over and, um, yeah, in person, see everyone, buy everyone a drink. Uh, uh, <laughs> not a whole drink, oh, that'd be expensive. <laughs> just a, um, and yeah. big ass table in a bar somewhere, and that, what 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 a fun table that would be to sit at. For yes. a few I, hours, huh? I would definitely. Would we'll, love to. We're going to be there the whole week um, for however, however long it takes. We'll sort out a hotel and everything else, and but that's our goal. That's our that's our ta that's our target. So uh, hopefully, um, we'll continue to 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 talk with publishers, talk with people, um, open new doors, make new friends. And yeah, we'll we'll get there next year. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Cool. Steve, I believe uh we're in the last few minutes. Let's yep. we need to pull a winner. We have a fifty dollar gift voucher up for grabs for Beeling Grimms. Um Steve is, is gonna run the numbers. Uh do you wanna roll the dice for me, please? You want me or anyone else? Yep. Bill, Charlie, got a uh, dice anyone? handy? Who's, who's got dice yeah, handy. yeah, yeah. What do you want? Uh just let's roll with these, Wendy. Please. Perfect. Twelve. Ooh. Not bad. Twitchy and twitchy. Twitchy and twitchy. Well done. Ah. Somebody who rushed. I was watching the, the chat earlier, and he, he's he's the one who rushed his work time meeting <laughs> to <laughs> come and join us. This guy's priority straight. Good. Yeah. He's been rewarded. Karma has rewarded him. Yeah, it's it's Friday afternoon. It's it's fine, just fine. Finish yeah. working a bit early. Um, 
So Twitch and Twitch, if you let Steve know, we need a uh, full name, email address, and then we can send that over to the guys. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. <sighs> guys, um, as always, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for coming on, having a chat. It's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure to catch up. Um, again, looking forward to uh, to get my Kickstarter copy. Uh, I bought the Rogue. And the dice. The dice has come with it as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, I, oh, I just have dice. to apologize yeah, to everybody about the dice. China is very, very difficult right now, as I'm sure most people yeah. have heard. Um, it's a real struggle. We the uh, the samples look amazing. The tins look amazing. Everything is coming out exactly the way we wanted to, just much slower than. <laughs> yeah, so, it'll happen. Cool. And with that, we are going to say goodbye, everybody. We'll right. see you soon. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Charlie. We'll see you again soon. Bye, bye. Thanks, Thanks, Al. Appreciate it.